we're going to look at adjusting journal entries. And specifically, we're going to look at accruals, accrued revenue and accrued expense. In a different video, we looked at deferrals, deferred revenue, deferred expense. Here we're looking at accruals. We have to record adjusting journal entries to make sure revenues and expenses are recorded in the proper time period. GAAP requires this. Okay? So, we're going to look at two examples. One example of accrued revenue, one example of accrued expense. There are other accounts that are accruals, which we're not going to look at. And the first example we're going to look at is accruing revenue. So let's just say, for example, we painted somebody's house during any given month, and the charge for the job was $3,000, and we completed the job, let's just say in December, but we're not going to get paid until January. With accruals, you record the revenue or expense in the current time period. You're not going to receive the money for revenue or pay the money for an expense <clears throat> until a following time period. That's how you know it's an accrual, which is the opposite of deferral. So we completed this job. We painted somebody's house. We're charging them $3,000, but we're not going to get paid until January. So with an accrual, the work has been done, and now I need to record the revenue, and in this case, we'll have a receivable. So on December 31st, I'm going to debit accounts receivable, and I'm going to credit service revenue. The adjusting entry, I'm going to abbreviate debit accounts receivable, credit service revenue $3,000. With all adjusting journal entries, they will include one balance sheet account and one income statement account, and they never include the cash account. Accounts receivable is an asset, it's on the balance sheet. Service revenue is revenue that goes on the income statement. Okay, so we have accrued the revenue, we'll get the money in a future time period. So now let's think about what's the effect if we did not record this adjusting entry, because both the balance sheet and the income statement are affected. If I did not record this adjusting entry, I would think that accounts receivable has $3,000 less than it actually has. Okay, so if I did not record this, assets would be understated or undervalued. Same thing with service revenue. If I don't record this adjusting entry, I think service revenue is zero or $3,000 less than what we have in there. And revenue is undervalued. Now let's look at the income statement. Notice I have two columns here. This column is with the adjusting journal entry, which is correct. This is without the adjusting entry because I forgot to adjust or I didn't know what an adjustment was. Okay, so here's service revenue of $3,000. And that means that my revenue was really 53000 and therefore net income is $21,000. So, you have to think in terms of the accounting equation. If I, do, if I did not record this adjusting entry, accounts receivable would be less by 3000 Assets would be undervalued by 3000 Revenue would be undervalued by 3000 if revenue is undervalued by $3,000 on the income statement, net income is undervalued. And net income flows into retained earnings, which is stockholders' equity on the balance sheet. So what happens is, if we don't accrue revenue, assets will be undervalued, equity is undervalued. Now, notice we're still in balance, but we have a mistake on both the balance sheet and on the income statement if we forget or we don't accrue revenue at the end of each month. Okay, for our accrued expense, we're going to look at payroll. I need to kind of give you the data to set this up. We're going to assume it's a two-week or ten-day pay period. There's no overtime, there's no weekend work, we're trying to keep it simple. And gross payroll for all the employees collectively for that ten-day period is $20,000 or $2,000 per day. Now, let's assume that for this year, December 31st, falls on a Wednesday, okay? So my 10-day period is from the 29th of December to uh, January 9th. Payday is the following Friday. So we, at the end of the month, have to accrue 
wages. And there's three days, 29th, 30th, 31st. If we divide 20,000 by 10 days, that's $2,000 per day, two, four, six. We have to accrue $6,000 of wages. So I'm in a debit wage expense. And since I'm not paying them till the 16th, I accrue a payable of $6,000. That's my adjusting journal entry. Debit wage expense, 6,000 credit wage payable, $6,000. Wage expense goes on the income statement, wage payable, liability goes on the balance sheet. All adjusting entries have one balance sheet, one income statement account, and they never have the cash accounts. Okay, so now we have to go through the same thought process. If I did not accrue wage expense, I would think that my liabilities were zero or $6,000 less. So liabilities, and here's my accounting equation. I step over to the right, here's liabilities, here's equity. Liabilities would be understated by 6,000. Wage expense, I would think is $6,000 less than it actually is. Okay, so now let's go over here. If wage expense is $6,000 less, here's wage expense, 6,000, then my net income is really $12,000. But if I don't record wage expense, I think my expense is a 32,000, and I think income is 18,000. My expenses are really 38,000, and therefore net income is 12,000, okay? So now, if I undervalue expenses, I overvalue income. This is the correct column. But if I don't adjust, I think these are the correct numbers. So my liabilities on the balance sheet were undervalued by 6,000. Since expenses were undervalued by 6,000, income is overvalued by 6,000, and income flows into retained earnings, which is stockholders' equity. So again, on the accounting equation analysis, here it is, assets, liabilities, plus equity. I'm gonna step over, here's liabilities, here's equity. Liabilities undervalued by six, equity overvalued by six. We're still in balance, but we have mistakes on both the balance sheet and the income statement. So we are required by GAAP to accrue revenues and expenses to record revenues and expenses in the proper time period and to adjust the related asset and liability accounts.